people of God, what are you going through? What situation are you going through? Which is tempting other people to judge you. Today I want to speak about Job. Job in the Bible, in the book of Job. And the situation of Job. You are, most of you are acquainted with the book of Job. Amen. Even people that are not Christians, they have heard about Job. Even people that do not have the Holy Spirit have heard about Job. The Bible says of Job that he was a, in the first chapter of Job, you will read that he was a blameless and a righteous or an upright person. And one day when the sons of God, i.e. the angels of God, came to stand before the throne of God, the devil, the adversary also came to, come to, came to stand before the Lord. And the Lord said to him, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered my servant Job? Let us go to, let us go to Job 1. Amen. I want to speak about this great servant of God. And I want to speak about particularly making the right judgment or more importantly in this case, to not make wrong judgments. And even more importantly, maybe to keep quiet, to keep quiet when you don't know what is going on in the life of other people. So the Bible says that one day the angels, now read from Job chapter 1 and verse 6, one day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, where do you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not put the hedge around him and his household and everything he has? And what I was uh, quoting or uh, referring to initially, in the first verse of the chapter 1, the Bible says that Job was a upright and upright and blameless man. A man that feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. And the rest of the story, you know that all his children, his seven sons, his, three, his uh, three daughters, all his livestock, his animals, his servants, the devil came and he just wiped them all away. And if that wasn't enough, in chapter 2, you can read that how Satan, or the adversary, how Satan is uh, the name of Satan in Hebrew, you see. That means the adversary came again to stand before the throne of God. And uh, the Lord allowed him to deal with his physical body just to, he told, he commanded Satan not to touch his life, to not touch his soul, to spare his life. So Satan hit him with sore, so he had to scrape himself with pottery. And even his wife said to him, why don't you give up your integrity? Or the, uh, his wife said precisely, are you still min maintaining your integrity? Curse God and die. And then, whereupon Job answered, you talk like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. And then the Bible says that Job's three friends named uh, Eliphaz and uh, Bildad, what was their names again, people of God? El Eliphaz, I think you, that's the right pronunciation. Eliphaz, Bildad, and so far. They came to sit down with him and to mourn together with him. But after some days of mourning with him, they began to open their mouth and try in attempt to educate Job. You see? To educate Job, for instance, in chapter 3, in chapter 4, Eliphaz starts speaking to Job, speaking about... For instance, in verse 7, who being innocent has ever perished? 
worthy of right ever destroyed? And Job is replying in chapter 6. And in chapter 8, his other second friend, Bildad, is speaking. For instance, or for example, in chapter, I mean, in verse 5, Bildad says, But if you seek God earnestly and plead with the Almighty, and here is something that I won't really want to underscore, if you are pure and upright, even now he will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state, which the Lord did. You can read in the final chapter of Job. Is it the 42nd chapter? Yes, Job 42. The Bible says that the Lord restored Job and he blessed the latter part of Job's life even more than the former part. And uh, his daughters were the most beautiful in the land. So the Lord really had mercy on him and restored him. Amen. But what I wanted to point out was Job 8, 6. If you are pure and upright. So these three friends, they are talking a lot to Job. You can read this about this throughout the book of Job, throughout all the chapters. But what you can read about also in the end of the book of Job is that God is angry with those three friends. The Bible does not say that God is angry with Elihu, which also speaks, is a fourth person, person that speaks to Job in starting from chapter 34. But the Bible says that God is angry. In uh, Job 42, verse 7, the Bible says, After the Lord has said these things to Job, he said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, I'm angry with you and your two friends. And those two friends being the one I mentioned, Bildad and so far. Because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So my focus in this video is the intent is to center the focus and the preaching and teaching of this video around to not judge incorrectly. Do not be fast to judge because it is very interesting that Bildad uses the words if you are pure and upright, whereas the Bible says in the first chapter that Job was blameless and upright. In other words, pure and upright. The word blameless means pure. Those words blameless and pure are referring to a spiritual pure person. As if you look at us being, and also the Israelites in the Old Covenant, being the bride of the God of Israel, and as we are the bride of Christ, and we are to keep our dress without spot, without wrinkle, in other words, blameless and pure. In the same way, Job was blameless. Job was pure. And Bildad use, is using those words, if you are pure and upright. The question is, is he indirectly saying or questioning if Job is blameless and pure? Can one interpret this as if those three friends were looking at him? He's, obviously, they are true friends because you see that in the second, in the third chapter, now in the end of the second chapter, the Bible says that the same three friends sat down with Job on the ground for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. So although them being good and close friends to Job, obviously according to what the Bible attests, they made the wrong judgment. They saw the life of Job. He lost his animals. He lost his seven sons. He lost his three daughters. He got inflicted with sores. Can you imagine sitting and scraping yourself with pottery? So full of sores. And these three friends, they begin to be tempted to judge him a little bit. Why does the Bible says 
Why does the Bible say that God said, I am angry? God is angry and he mentions their names. He mentioned those three same people, those, those three friends of Job with names. And God says that my servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your fully. He says, God is, the Lord is speaking to Eliphaz. I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken the truth about me as my servant Job has. So now take the seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. I have been in a situation of hardship and I also am not going to give any names out in this video, but I've also had people judge me. People making their own conclusions about my life as if they are my judge, as if they are God. Instead of crying out to God, instead of going on their knees and saying to the Lord, I don't know what is happening to Apostle Daniel. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what happened. I no, don't know the reason being for him to go through this terrible situation. But Lord, please have mercy. But Lord, please strengthen him. It is very dangerous to begin to play judge, you see. The Bible speaks, for instance, in Matthew 7, chapter 7, about judging others. Don't get me wrong, we can judge others, we can judge the sin in the life of other people if we are not committing, practicing, having that same sin in our lives. I'm not that kind of person, foolish person, that uh, don't say, don't judge others. I know what the Word of God says. I am making the right judgments. You can see, look upon many of our videos. We make judgments here. If God wants that, if God reveals something, you see, we can judge others if we don't have the same sin in our lives. It's not what the Bible says. But to judge incorrectly. It would be better, maybe it would be better for Job's three friends to intercede for him. To say to the Lord, I don't know why Job is going through this. I don't know the reason for him to lose all his family, all his animals, in other words, his source of income. He lost all his power in that sense. But Lord, have mercy on him. Lord, help him. And if you believe that the other person that you are looking, you are looking at another person, your friend, be it a man or a woman, a family member, a man of God, a woman of God, instead of you making Swift conclusions. Go before the Lord and ask for mercy. Go before the Lord and intercede. Don't be quick to judge because you don't know what is going on. You don't know the source of the hardship of that person. You don't know what the Lord allow those people, that man, that woman to go through. And you are quick to open your foolish mouth. The Lord might come against you. The Lord might be angry with you as the Lord said to Eliphaz in the 42nd chapter of the book of Job, so that the righteous and upright man that Bildad spoke about and said to directly to him, if you are blameless and upright, so that the righteous man, the upright man and pure and blameless man Job had to intercede for them. What do you think will happen if Job, a righteous person, an upright person, I mean, didn't intercede and pray for them. What do you think will happen to them? Isn't it very obvious that the judgment of God will fall upon them? Be careful. Be careful with self-righteousness. Be careful with judging others. Hallelujah. Amen. The kingdom of God is a kingdom of mercy. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of interceding for others. Is a kingdom of human beings receiving unmerited grace and favor by the Lord. In other words, is a kingdom full of imperfect men and women. 
We are all fragile. We are all weak. We do not know why people have to go through things. I am Prophet Desanya, have been through a lot. But the Lord has always infused us with strength, whereas other people have judged us. With many words, as I said before, I'm not going to call out any names here. I could drop some names in this video, but I'm not going to do it. That is not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to speak about and to encourage you people that are watching with this story of Job. With some hands-on examples, also drawing some parallels to my own life or some other analogies to encourage you and also to admonish you and to ask you to be careful. Be careful when you see that person go through those things and you feel tempted because when a person is going through something that you don't understand with your human intellect, you are under a tempta temptation to judge that person. Be careful so you don't fall into that temptation. The Lord told us in the Lord's Prayer, or He said in the Lord's Prayer, lead us out of temptation. It is a temptation to judge others. What if that person that you are slandering and judging and speaking in love is going through something based on that he or she is blameless and upright or pure and upright as Job was? And you open your mouth wide open, gushing out any kind of words, even sharing words and judging and slandering that person out in the, maybe in the worldwide, on social media, anywhere in your church, other places, at your workplace, wherever. Be very, very careful. Oh my Lord, it makes me think so many testimonies and examples are dawning down on me right now as I speak to you, people of God, <laughs> and people that have been very mean in their utterings. Hallelujah. May God forgive them. May God forgive them. May God forgive them. I am a little bit careful because of my experience of studying the Holy Scriptures of God and also by my own experience, by what I have been going through. Hallelujah. Yes, what more should we point out from this wonderful book, the book of Job, uh, people of God? Hallelujah. So, luckily, Job interceded and prayed for his three friends so that the Lord didn't have to deal with them. And you can see that Job, for instance, in chapter 7 his, and verse 20 and 21 said, you can see that Job is suffering. He's complaining to the Lord and said, he says, if I've seen what I've done to you, speaking to the Lord, why have you made me your target? Have I become a burden to you? This is pretty heavy words, uh, people of God. But why do you not pardon me my offenses and forgive my sins? He's bleeding. His heart is bleeding. His life is bleeding. Both spiritually in his soul and physically as well with all those sores that he's scraping on with the pottery. For I will soon lie down in the dust. You will search for me, but I will be no more. So if a person is complaining like that, if a person is, maybe it seems like that person is going a little bit too far because of the agony of his or her situation. Who are you? Are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to interfere? Or are you going to intercede are you going to even if you hear that person speaking a little bit too much mercy will tell you love of Hashem the love of God will tell you to intercede and to even to 
begin to plead with the Lord for that person. Lord, please forgive that person for what he or she is saying. Please consider that person's terrible situation full of agony. The situation where this person is bleeding from his or her heart, even from their physical pain, from that pain of poverty, from that pain of rejection, from that pain of isolation, Lord. Please consider that the words that comes out of their mouth, which might, the words might not be in accordance with the word of God. You might not be blessing words, but please forgive that person and consider their agony. Consider them, O Lord, and forgive them. Help them, strengthen them, restore them in the name of the Lord. That should be more of the direction of your prayer instead of opening your mouth, judging. Sometimes it's even better to not speak than to begin to correct people even. Go on your knees and plead. Go on your, knee and in, your knees and intercede for that person. God is a merciful God, you see. And God is also a God that tests people. He not only tests, he's not only testing people with situations, allowing situations of hardship, but he can also test the people around that person that goes through those terrible things to see how you will respond. Can I entrust you? Can I entrust you with what I want to entrust you with? With that life that I want to give you? Can I entrust you with that ministry? Can I entrust you with the life of other people? Or are you going to be so soon to judge? Or are you going to be so soon to utter and gushing out foolish words of your mouth? The Lord, you can not smart the Lord. He tests us. Sometimes even day and, and night, the Lord tests us. The Bible records. Not me saying, I'm telling you what the Bible says. By the testimonies of the Bible and by the words of God in the Bible, the Lord tests people. So be careful. Hallelujah. See this video as an encouragement. See this video as a warning. See this video as me sharing experience with you. Hallelujah. With the love in the love of Jesus Christ. So, take care, people of God, in the name of our Lord and Savior and Healer and Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.